I miss my ex-girlfriend, I do. I miss her a lot. She was a great girl. Her name was Kate, uh, short for Catherine. And she lived in London with her parents and her brother Nate, uh, short for Natherin. They're nice people. <laughs> She was a great person, you know, great sense of humour, tremendous sense of breasts, and just this sort of really nice um, <laughs> personality that I really sort of liked. I didn't expect anything to happen between us. We were friends for a long, long time before we started dating. Then suddenly out of the blue, she suddenly started getting very flirty. Remember one evening she was around my house, and she did something very flirtatious. She did the uh, cherry stem trick. She put like a cherry stem in her mouth. She tied it into a knot with her tongue. It's got very sort of sexual connotations. Uh, then she took things one step further. She put a whole kinder egg in her mouth, pulled out a fully assembled toy. <laughs> I'm telling you. And, and she suggested we go clubbing together. And I was nervous because I'm not really much of a clubber, but I didn't want to let that come across. So as we went to the nightclub, I wanted to make myself seem as chill and laid back and relaxed as possible. We got to the nightclub, you know, I had my hand in my pocket uh, of my shirt. Is that weird? I don't know. And we went in and it wasn't that. <laughs> It wasn't my sort of nightclub. They weren't really playing any of my favorite music. They weren't playing any R&B and a love recorder and bassoon, none of it. <laughs> but it didn't matter because as soon as we got out there on the dance floor, I was rocking out my best dance moves to impress her. Dance moves you've all probably tried in the past. We're talking the chainsaw, the lawnmower, the sprinkler, the shopping trolley. Yeah. Dance moves a bit like this. <laughs> Angle for you. <laughs> you know what this one's called? Are trying and failing to hang a clock on a wall? <laughs> now, we were having a great time together, and I wasn't expecting anything romantic to happen between us because, you know, she was way out of my league. She's really hot, and I look like all of the Beatles. <laughs> but suddenly, out the blue, she just leaned in and she just kissed me right there on the dance floor uh, and mouth. <laughs> she just pulled away and she said, Is this a date? Uh, short for Datherin. <laughs> and I got flustered. I said, I'm not actually sure what would actually constitute a date in this case. I'm not sure if this is a date, because obviously, you know, dating is quite weird in the first place, you know, because human beings are the only things that date. Animals don't date. Animals don't even mate in the same way as humans do. I mean, you know, just look at the North Alaskan salmon. Um, <laughs> And I thought she was going to want to leave and just walk away, but then she suggested we leave together and go back to mine, you know, presumably to engage in some form of sexual argy-bargy, and... <laughs> I was nervous and I was excited, because I guess I've always sort of seen sex as quite a sort of spiritual experience, um, in that I often pray for it to no avail. <laughs> I just wanted to get out of her as quickly as I possibly could. We left the nightclub together, we got back to mine, and we started kissing again. And suddenly this really sort of forceful, dominating side of her personality that I'd always really loved came out. And she started kissing me really forcefully, and then she threw me up against a wall as if I was spaghetti, and she wanted to make sure I was fully cooked. <laughs> and we got up to my room, and you know, we got down to it. We started making fuck. <laughs> and afterwards, I turned to her and I didn't really know what to say. I never really know what to say in a post-coital situation. No one really does. I usually just sort of tend to give the other person a look as if we're both strangers on a train platform and we've just found out our journey's been delayed. 